Zoning Board of Appeals meeting to order. Can we start with roll call? Mary Seminara. Aziz Essen. Norma Drummond. Tara Franco. Thank you. Can I ask everyone to stand for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. All right, we have a couple changes to the agenda this evening. Um, number one, we will open, but we have a request from the applicant. They're not likely to be here this evening, so that number one will be adjourned. Uh, we are not going to open number four at all. That application's been withdrawn. Number five can't be opened because the applicant didn't do his noticing. And then there is no, not gonna be any action on number seven, eight, and nine at the request of the applicant. So with those couple changes, um, I guess I should start by wishing everybody Happy New Year. <laughs> Welcome to 2019. Since last we met in November, we do have one set of minutes to approve going back to our meeting for, for Tuesday, November 27th. Uh, as I stated right before the meeting, there's going to be an additional amendment to the minutes because the vote on Mr. Ashley's appeal to reconsider needs, the minutes need to reflect that the vote was unanimous, um, not just that it was approved. So with that additional amendment, do I have a motion to approve the minutes of November 27th? As amended. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. So our next two upcoming meetings are going to be Tuesday, February 26th, and Tuesday, March 26th. In the event of snow on February 26th, if town hall gets closed, the, town, the, the zoning board meeting will be canceled. There will not be a makeup meeting. If you are scheduled for a public hearing that evening, please have your sign reflect the change of date, which would be March 26th. Um, but so far, the weather has cooperated for us, so... All right, so with all those changes and with everything else that I've said, we do have a couple public hearings on this evening. Um, with, for those public hearings, it is an opportunity for neighbors to comment and give the board anything you'd like us to know about these applications. Uh, the, uh, after we're done with the public hearings, there are reviews which, in essence, are not ready for public comment at this time. So I'd like to start with item number one, which is Appeal 388. To Klaus Garage Inc., Dave Lawrence, owner of Klaus Garage Inc., 2619 Route 52, Hopewell Junction is requesting an expansion of a non conforming use, an interpretation of automobile service facility and used car sales, as well as a variance to the 100 foot buffer requirement on Route 52 in order to continue the outside display of cars pursuant to section 194-3, 194-16, 194-86, 194-116, -16, and note 11 of the zoning ordinance. Do I have a motion to open the public hearing? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Okay, as I noted previously, the uh, we did receive a request from the engineer or the, um, the professional for this applicant that they requested. They need to do a little bit more research since we last met in November, uh, the town's been doing some additional research related to whether we can approve the use of, of used car sales. Um, again, part of the request for the interpretation. Um, and so it kind of came to our attention from the town attorney that our consideration of an expansion of a non-conforming use would be limited to no more than 50% of the size of the area of the used car sales that he could document in 1973. That's correct. Okay, so we all need, you know, we went back to look some, at some historic aerials to see what was in use there, you know, and the applicant is obviously working on that as well. So, um, so the applicant will not be here this evening. However, this was noticed. Neighbors were given notice of this, and if anybody wishes to offer public comment at this time, your comment would be welcome. So is there anyone who wishes to comment on this application? If not, seeing none, do I have a motion to adjourn this public hearing to February? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. All right, so item number two, Appeal 3885, LMD Property Holdings, LLC. LMD Properties Holdings, LLC is requesting a variance to build a house on an undersized lot, 0.7 acres in an R1 zone at 470 Shenandoah Road, Hopewell Junction, which was created in 1962 pursuant to schedule, the schedule of bulk regulations. The property is in the ownership of Matika. Do I have a motion to open the public hearing? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Good evening. 
I know you are here this evening. Um, all right, so we first saw your application a couple months ago. Correct. Uh, we all mistakenly thought the property was in an R2 zone. At our last meeting, you brought it to our attention that we needed to read the map a little bit closer. So our, the you. attorneys have done that review and have, in fact, agreed with your review that the property is in an R1, which makes this a lot more palatable because Good. as an R2, meeting the two-acre zone with a 0.7-acre lot is a lot more difficult. Sure. You have provided a plot plan, in essence, that shows you can build a house mm -hmm. within the setback, within the building envelope. Correct. Um, so, you know, one of the things uh, this board is obviously concerned about is if you build a house within a very limited lot size or a lot plot, you know, with, uh, within a lot that has limited setbacks mm -hmm. and limited buildable area, we want to be sure that the homeowners are well understanding of the fact that there may be some limitations on what they can do on this lot. But in sure. this case, it's pretty clear that they have a pretty substantial backyard. They do. So they should be still be able to do put a shed up and, you know, potentially do other things back there. Correct. So I think based on our review of this, um, again, I, for the record, because this is now the public hearing related to this, this was a lot that was created. It was made undersized because of a taking by New York State related to the construction of I-84. Mm -hmm. uh, so certainly not the homeowner's doing or anything of that nature. Right. Uh, although the homeowner was compensated by New York State for that taking and for making that lot undersized. So, um, but again, in reviewing the zoning that the taking and the creating it, the lot to be undersized really did occur before zoning. Barely, but it did. One so. year, yeah. Um, so any questions or comments from board members? No, I'm good. Is anyone here to speak for or against the request from LMD Property Holdings LLC requesting a variance to build a, hot, a house on an undersized lot at 470 Shenandoah Road, Hopewell Junction? Yep. Seeing none, do I have a motion to close the public hearing? So moved. Second. All in favor? Oh, uh, right. Okay, thank you. Uh, this is a request, uh, this is appeal number 385 applicant is LMD Holding a property holding LLC requesting a variance to build a house on an undersized lot which was created par prior to zoning. Uh, the location is 470 Shenandoah Road, as resolution offered by Zoning Board Member Aziz Hassan, whereas the applicant has applied to the Zoning Board for the above stated variance, and whereas the Board moves to adopt the standard decision and order and finds that the granting of the variance will not produce an undesirable change in the character of the neighborhood or be a detriment to the community as the lot has been in existence. In, in this site since April 1963 when the New York State took 0.25 acre for the construction of Interstate 84, thus creating the undersized lot. The desired result cannot be achieved by some other means. The variance requested is not substantial. The proposed area variance will not have an adverse effect or impact on the physical or environmental conditions in the neighborhood as many ad adjacent properties are undersized. Therefore, now therefore be it resolved that the Zoning Board of Appeals hereby approves the above stated variance. Is there a second? Second. Let's give Mary's voice I heard first. <laughs> so uh, votes as follows, Aziz. Aye. Tara. Aye. Okay, we've got to change that. Mary. Aye. Somebody else's name showed up on this. And then myself, aye. So your motion carries, you're all set. Thank you. All right, now you deal with the building department, obviously, to get your. Perfect. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Take care. <coughs> okay, item number three, Appeal 3892 Lockwood. Gregory Lockwood, 329 Stormville Mountain Road. Stormville is requesting an additional five foot frontline variance for an existing 24 by 26 foot detached garage for which an eight foot frontline variance had been granted in 2014 pursuant to section 194-107C of the of the zoning ordinance. Do I have a motion to open the public hearing? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Good evening. Good evening. All right, so back in 2014, you came before us um, looking to do a garage. You, uh, you, the area on the side of your house where generally somebody would mm. put an attached garage 
um, slopes down pretty significant. The topography changes from where your existing driveway is and goes back to there's quite the wet yes. area behind your house. So, you know, the ability to, number one, you'd have to bring substantial fill in to be able to create an area there. Um, but so you requested the board considering allowing you to put a, a garage, I think it was diagonal, kind of across yes. at an angle in the front of your yes. house. I went out, did a site visit, confirmed with you, yeah, that where you proposed was, in fact, the best location. But I guess we didn't have a survey at the time. And no. Yeah, so I think what ended up happening, based on why you're back before us, is that you probably were looking at the edge of pavement as opposed to what you're Somewhere along the line, we measured wrong, yes. Yes, uh, as opposed to where your actual property line is, which is part of the reason why this board really now insists on surveys, because people think their property begins or ends in a certain place. Mm -hmm. And we're, we've run into this issue, obviously, one too many times. So you've now built your garage in good faith, thinking you had the appropriate yes. variance. Um, building department really had no issues except for the fact that it ended up being closer to the road than it uh, should yeah. have been point because half, of that feet. property yeah. line. So now with, me with the appropriate measurements, we know you need an extra five feet for a total of a 13 foot variance. Um, questions or comments <clears throat> from board members? No, I'm good. Okay, so is there anyone here who wishes to speak for or against? The request from Gregory Lockwood, 329 Stormville Mountain Road, requesting an additional five foot variance for an existing 24 foot by 26 foot detached garage for which an eight foot front line variance was granted in 2014. Seeing none, do I have a motion to close the public hearing? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Barbara? Barbara? Oh, um, yes. <laughs> I got confused from you. <laughs> Appeal number 3892 for Gregory Lockwood <coughs> for a five foot additional frontline variance for an existing 24 foot by 26 foot Sorry. detached garage for which an eight foot variance, uh, frontline variance had been granted in 2014 under appeal number 3674 pursuant to section 194-107C of the zoning ordinance. Whereas um, the resolution is offered by zoning board member Tara Franco, whereas the applicant has applied for the above stated variance, and whereas the board moves to adopt the standard decision and order and finds that the granting of the variance will not produce an undesirable change in the character of the neighborhood or be a detriment to the, commu a de detriment to the community as the garage is in the location which was previously approved by the ZBA. However, the applicant had, mis had measured his setbacks incorrectly and thus requiring an additional five foot. The desired result cannot be achieved by some other means and the variance requested is not substantial. The proposed area variance will not have an adverse effect or impact on the physical or environmental conditions in the neighborhood. Now therefore be it resolved that the Zoning Board of Appeals hereby approves the above stated variance. Is there a second? Second. Votes as follows, Aziz? Aye. Tara? Aye. Mary? Aye. And myself, aye. Your motion carries, you're all set. Great, thank you. All right, have a good evening. All right, item number four was the application was withdrawn by the applicant. So we need to take a motion to refund the applicant's, uh, all but $5 of the applicant's application fee. Do I have such a motion? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, so that's all set. Um, item number five is we have appeal 3894 Ashley, John Ashley, 338 Stormville Mountain Road. Stormville is requesting a variance to allow an accessory apart, an existing accessory apartment to remain in a detached garage which was, which was built in 2000, while his house which was destroyed in a fire is rebuilt pursuant to section 194-91 of the zoning ordinance. All right, there is no noticing of this application. The applicant did not purchase his sign. And so we were wondering if he was actually going to show up or not. And seeing none, so we didn't hear, we didn't get anything in writing from the professional or from the applicant. I guess we got a- Adjourn it to next. I mean, well, we're not adjourning it because we're not opening it. So, but I think we need to direct Pam to yeah, send notice to him that he needs to make a decision about how is he proceeding because 
if in fact he's not going to pursue this appeal, then the, zone, the building department needs to pursue whatever action they need to pursue. Okay, so we agree? Yes, we do. Okay. So, no number five. All right. All right, so that was it for our public hearings. The rest of our evening is now gonna be focused on reviews. So item number six, appeal 3872, slow shower, Eddie slow shower, 40 Brandy Lane, Wappingers Falls is requesting a four foot height variance for, a, for 38 feet of existing eight foot lattice fencing, which is in the front of the dwelling, a four foot height variance for 115 feet of existing eight foot high lattice <coughs> fencing, as well as a two foot setback variance for all fencing pursuant to section 194-98 of the zoning, zoning ordinance. Good evening. Good evening, happy new year everyone. You too. So you filed your application early last year. We expected action maybe by the town board in September, you know, so we were adjourned at that point. Correct. You expected action again later in the year. It's now January. Correct. And what are you gonna do about your fence? <laughs> well, I did supply, uh, according to uh, the supervisor's office that finally, the discussion on a shed amnesty law as well as fencing is going to take place at the February workshop. Okay. Pam, did you give that to us? I believe so. Let me just read it into the because this was news to me, so. Okay, the town, uh, Mr. Slowshower, this is from Gina Grippo, the supervisor's secretary. The town board will be having a workshop in February to discuss the fence and shed amnesty law. Okay. So it is my understanding they, at the February workshop, they're going to have a discussion as to either move forward. Uh, if they are, I would then, uh, think that at the February uh, regular meeting, there would be a resolution and a public hearing, although I don't want to speak for, well, if uh, having for it the it board. Oh. So it's a workshop it's a discussion workshop, right? first. Then normally, if it's something they would then vote on to move and then add, and the attorney can correct me if I'm wrong, if that's something they were going to move forward with, it would then move to the regular, regular meeting at the end of the month. Right, so I think what would happen here is, um, you know, they would talk about it at the workshop. They would decide if they want to move forward. So if they would move fo if they want to move forward, they'd first have to go into an open meeting in February and then um, declare a public hearing. Right. So there, there'd definitely be no public hearing before March if they decide to move forward. But again, if talking about an amnesty law implies that the fence or shed is in compliance with the code, but for some other issue, and an eight-foot fence is not even allowed by code as opposed to like, because yours is on the property line and right. it's we, in front of the dwelling. I've not gotten any details and I'm sure the attorney, I don't know what the specifics, all that was mentioned to me is that fences and sheds that were erected and you can demonstrate proof that it was erected prior to December 31st of 2017 uh, would then, now I don't know specifically what size of the fence, size of the shed, and those particular details, obviously that would be something that the town board would have to discuss, I guess, with the building department and with council, and I guess with your department as well, as to what fences would be allowed uh, grandfathered in and what fences would not. And I'm not trying to speak for anybody, just my interpretation of the direction that the supervisor is going. So best guess from anybody, when are we going to have a resolution on whether you're going to be grandfathered in or whether? Well, I would, we I would just, that. I would guess, just request again, again, I don't know how long, if it goes into March. Yeah, I would propose that we move it to, to April only because their meeting, your meetings, are two days before right, their, their meetings. Actual. So just not to be in the same situation, and it's probably my fault because I think I mixed up the days to come back here because they're meeting two days from now, although it wouldn't have made a difference because originally I was told this would have been discussed at the workshop meeting 
two weeks ago, but that didn't pan out. There was obviously other things that were more important for the town board to address, so this got pushed okay, off. Okay, so if we push this discussion to April, it gives the town board February and March. I would think, right? If, if April, if, would, April would be safer because okay. even if they had the public, if they do have the public hearing in March, you would think, I don't think they decided, you know, at the March public hearing and probably get kicked over to April, but. Because I'm sure there's all sorts of nuances to right. something like that being considered that we may even want to weigh well, in. Then the question then would be if you feel that's the time frame, um, this board's meeting is always two days before. Not time. always, sometimes. Well, it's the last, right, there's the last Thursday. Theirs is the fourth Thursday, fourth Thursday or the I'm fourth sorry. Tuesday. Four, Sometimes okay. if the first is on the Thursday, okay. all right, the fourth. I, I think by April we would know, um, the Z-Bay would know how you know, the town board's feeling about the amnesty. And if there's going to be an amnesty and how broad or how narrow it would be. So I think okay. April would be safe. Okay. So do I have a motion okay. to, to adjourn to his, the, the, re then, the consideration of this appeal until so, so until April, April, April's, uh, April's meeting? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Well, we will see you in April. Thank you, oh, everyone. By the way, are yes. you going to attend the workshop? I'm sorry? Are you going to attend the workshop that they are having in February? Absolutely. Okay, good. Because <laughs> I mean, they, because if you give your input at that. Uh, well, usually at the workshop, it, there's, there's no comments from the public. But still, I mean, just discuss it. I mean, I would be here, and then obviously, if it moves to the uh, end of the month meeting, I would definitely. You know, speak up and I'd want a clarification if they didn't know by then exactly whether all of my fencing falls in or just the part of it will fall in and then the lattice becomes non -conforming. Yeah, because as long as the town is aware of, of some of the concerns of the local resident, they can address that in the workshop. So your representative already is aware of it. They'll have a conversation that one yeah, of my only my only was that it's been there for 30 years. But again, it whoever did it back then obviously didn't do what they were supposed to do. So it's falling on me at this point. So right. that's fine. I just you know I just want to know what direction to go in, and obviously the weather isn't you know on our side. So I can't really do anything until probably April or May if in fact I do have to make some changes to uh, to the fencing. We'll so. see you in April. All right. Thanks, everybody. Have a good night. All right. Item number 11, Appeal 3895, Knapp. Will Knapp, 36 Shallow Stream Road, Carmel, is requesting a one-foot height variance for an existing 32-foot by 26-foot detached garage at property, which is in the, his ownership at 192 Rushmore Road, Stormville, pursuant to Section 194-107C of the Zoning Ordinance. Hello. Good evening. Will Knapp. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, I thought just one person was coming forward and it was, okay. You never know. All right, so this is the first time we're seeing your application, if you don't mind taking us through it. So you built a garage. Um, my name is Janice Drizal, Will Knapp's my husband. Uh, okay. We purchased uh, in September the property at 192 Rushmore Road. It has a um, pre-existing detached garage on the property. Um, that had an expired permit that we were told when we were considering buying the property. Uh, we did go to the building department twice to look at the um, folder to see if th there would be any issues that we would have going forward if we purchased the property to um, get the permit and then obtain the CO. Uh, the first time we went, we were told that because we weren't the owner, uh, we wouldn't be able to look at the uh, folder. Um, after we did go into contract for the property, we did go back with the contract in hand and were again told that we were not able to look at the folder because we weren't the owner. Okay. Um, so you did not actually build this? Correct. Okay. You purchased it as it was and in trying to close out the permit discovered that this was the issue? Yes. Okay. Do you know how long the garage has been there? It's been there since about 2010. Okay. Mr. Broderson, my apologies. I did skip over you. I'll get to you as soon as we finish with this one. All right, um, so are there any other issues here, Rick, in, your, in reviewing this property? No, I think they picked it all up because they're as built. So, I mean, we're not going to, if they didn't build it in the first place, we're not going to ask them to take it down. So, okay, so what does it look like it I'm assuming it matches in some way to the house it's 
Um, right? yes. It's not an eyesore? It's No. Is it visible to the road or to the neighbors? Uh, it's set back from the road. It's visible. Um, but if it's set back, it's probably in keeping with the scale of your house, right? It's in line with the house, pretty much. Okay. Questions or comments from board members? Yeah, I mean, it's off by about less than 18 inches or something like that. Is it 18 inches or 6 inches? It's 25 feet something. Uh, yeah, 25 feet. 25 feet is the maximum, and this is 26.6, if I remember correctly. There's one measurement of 26.67. Correct. And the thing is that you have a, looking at the, you have a terrain so that your measurement from different location it comes out as, as different. So your center location comes out to be uh, uh, 126.62, uh, which basically comes to, I mean, the center, uh, I mean, the, so I'm trying to figure out, it's the, the top of the ridge that is uh, coming out as 26.6. Uh, the, the center of the garage. Well, we were told um, to have a surveyor come in, and this is what they had provided with us, uh, with us uh, to us, to bring to the town. So I okay, don't Why don't know we have Rick answer that question? That. For the measurement of the? I don't know how they calculated it. Oh, OK. I to okay. Max today. OK. Because he's, he's been on that, that one. I know my, my husband spoke with the surveyor and he said it was to the ridge. To the ridge. Okay. Okay, so the, basically the ridge is... To the ridge point. Okay, the ridge point, because I mean, looking at the uh, calculations up here, I was, because it's like a grade and so the, um, each measurement is a little bit off and I couldn't figure out, and I just assumed it was the center of the, mm -hmm. of the ridge line. Center. Okay. Motion to advertise. Motion to advertise. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Pam, at the end, we'll, our clerk will give you the instructions for your, at, for your sign. Okay. Okay. And then we'll see you next month okay. for a public hearing. Excuse me. If it's 26 point something. It should be two feet. So we need to, we need to adjust that to, to make, to reflect two feet, not one foot. Okay. And that's how it will be advertised and that's how you have to put on your uh, on sign, sign in front of your house that you're requesting two feet variance, not 18 inches. Okay, I see. Okay, okay. so Pam will give you your instructions and then we'll see you next month. Okay, so okay. after the Wait. meeting? Or no, now? she can give it to you right now. Oh, okay. okay. All right, okay. thank you. All right, thank you. Mr. Broderson, my apologies. Item number 10 is Appeal 3819 Broderson. Gary Broderson, <laughs> 65 Ritter Road, Stormville, is requesting a two-year extension of his, his special permit, which allows a music studio in his home pursuant to Section 194-90 of the Zoning Ordinance. All right, just as a little history here. Yes. I just want to say thank you. Oh, good night. Have a good night. We'll see you next month. Okay. All right, um, the original approval was granted in October of 2010 was revised in 2011, extensions were granted in 2015, 2016, and it expired in November of 2018. He did apply in time to renew it, but because we did not have a December meeting, we're, we're, um, he's been pushed back to now. So um, so he is actually in, in compliance with his, his request, although I guess he could have gotten in just a little bit earlier. So. I understand the building department's been out there and there's been no violation or no complaints related to the operation of your studio. You've been operating a music studio, providing you know private lessons in your home. When this was first done, you did soundproofing to your house. I think by most of us were, have been, well, a lot of us, of us have been here to see you a couple times now. So um, for a while there, some of your neighbors were complaining about uh, the park cars being parked in the area. And, and, but it's like I said, at this point, we haven't heard lately of any complaints. So is anything, has anything changed in, since you were um, here two years well, the, ago? The neighbor that was complaining uh, moved. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess that helps. Yeah, I'm on TV, right? I'm sorry. <laughs> Just, she's not there anymore. So, all so, right, so that helps. Um, but again, you did a lot of, like I said, soundproofing to your home and everything else so that it wouldn't, you would not be disturbing your neighbors. So yeah. the, like, the biggest issue I, I think I remember aside from that one neighbor was sometimes just the cars that just kind of sit, I guess, and wait for your students to finish, but it's not gonna be multiple cars, so. I don't know, there's a fence there. No, there's not I hear you. multiple cars. Okay, so um, we do, we are required to have a public hearing just in case somebody 
needs to let us know something. So do I have a motion to advertise? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. So we'll see you next month. Do okay. you still have your sign from last time? I do. Good. Thank you. All right. Thank you. All right. Item number 12, Appeal 3896, Catrell. Gunther Cottrell, 110 Van Black Road, Hopewell Junction is requesting a 650 square foot variance for an existing 40 foot by 40 foot detached garage pursuant to section 194-107C of the zoning ordinance. Good evening. Hi, good evening. Morning. So this is the first time that, again, we're seeing your application. Yes. Um, let me get you yours. Okay, so you had already one detached garage on this property yes. and then built a second one. And then, so the second one though is where we're running into issues that it's apparently wet in the back of your property. Uh, I never have a problem. It's well, not that you don't have a problem, but again, if there's a water course back there we need to be careful about making sure you have a drainage easement that runs along the side of your property and there's a stream uh, that feeds I think about 75 80, 80 feet I'm not too sure but I do have the plan yeah we have it we have what you submitted so first off I think I need to understand why these are large really large structures back there and so we need to understand why you need two large structures does the house itself have a garage uh, well i'm a hobbyist uh, i have a bunch of classic cars and military truck and i have one big truck that would actually take that spot uh, but then I there's also a metal cart port back there uh the carport will be for my trailer my enclosed trailer my race car uh just trying to put everything away so it's not an eyesore in the neighborhood. Okay, does the house itself have a garage? Yes, two-car garage. And do you live here or do you rent this house out? I'm waiting for the lease to expire and I'll be moving back in. Uh, they're just there for about a year and a half now, but I'm just waiting for the lease to expire. I do work in the city, it's just too much commuting back and forth, so I got a place closer. But since the, their lease expired, I'll be moving back up. Okay, so you own the property, you rent out the house, so that's why you can't yeah, use the, you, that's why you can't rent, that's why you can't use the garage that's in the house, because it's probably part of the lease. Uh, well, they have one, they have, they have, they have, they're taking one spot, and the other one, I have one of my old car in there oh, now. Oh, okay. So, like I said, six months, they'll be out, and I'll be moving back in. Okay, so how big is the first detached garage that was there uh, first? 53 by 36, I believe. 53 by 36. And when was that one built? Uh, uh, it was already there when I got it. He, he did apply for a permit. He has all the paperwork. Okay. It was existing garage. When did you buy the property? I bought it about five years ago. I believe that one was built 2010 right on that okay so it was built 2010 plus or minus yeah. by a previous owner yes ma'am okay so then you built this other garage when uh about maybe six months ago i'm just trying to beat the winter i figure put away all the cars and the trucks then and then you've got a huge gravel area back there is just saying if this garage is 53 by 36 this one is 40 by 40 the gr gravel area is exceeding particularly well, with the roadway that goes well, around the buildings about, it's exceeding at least that area maybe even twice that area I'm about 200 feet from my next-door neighbor uh, there's plenty of room uh, I have three acre property almost you know I just want to Put all the cars away is it all s wooded back there um, yeah it's just there's nothing behind me it's just wooded yes 
It's wooded behind you, and it's wooded to the right-hand side. side. Yes. The other side is definitely not. They have a, a pretty clear backyard, although it looks like there's a line of pine trees or evergreens. Uh, yeah, this is just like a border line. I'm about 80 feet from that. Uh, his house is 200 feet away. Okay, you are... This garage, the one you just put up, is only 54 feet away from your neighbor. Uh, no. From your neighbor's property. According to you the mean survey from the you side, gave you us. Mean from the side, yes. Yeah. 54.7 feet. You are 99.2 feet from the rear. For the, again, this new garage. And the corner of the other garage, the closest corner, is 53.4 feet from the property line. But again, the issue is that we've got is this, the fact that it's wet back there. What is, it says one story metal garage, one story metal garage and a metal carport. That, that's for my enclosed trailer. No, no, I understand that. What do they look like though? I uh, don't have a, I, a. I have some pictures. Uh, because do they match the house? Oh do yeah, they... oh yeah. Well, I spent a lot, uh, you, do you mind if I show it to you? No, come on up. Here's the truck and a carport, the, the military truck. And it's on a carport for now, just to keep it away from the weather. And they all match. Um, make sure the other. I mean, I s spent big money for it just to make everything look uniform. Same colors, the house, the other existing garage. They're all the same. Um, the the other, other more board members. And this one here. Just Mary to needs to see. Um, not seeing it. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> It expired. Oh, okay, thank you. Thank you. So that's uh, uh, that's the carport. That's the carport. Carport. Okay. How about the garage? The, We're oh, asking the, about what the does the garage, garage look like. Um, for both the garages. Uh, yes, I have. Uh, Do you have some idea of what the, how big the metal carport is? 28 by 17, but it's uh, gravel. Yeah. It's, the, it's the two garage. It just looks big because it's on far away. No, it I'm looks ugly. It's, it's it's metal, yeah. Yeah, yeah but it's 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 not. It's it's done. a it's a residential neighborhood though, so it's. I can paint it any color you want, but it's it's durable and. and it's not like oh, I'm not doubting it's durable, <laughs> but it is a, it's a, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's an, it's like, it looks industrial or commercial and doesn't look like it's a residential garage. Here you go. You're going to show it to everybody? I saw <coughs> it. What's the finish on the house? Um, uh, vinyl siding. Same color as which? Those are two different colors. I, they, this one is just, I need to I'll wash to this way, it'll be the same. They're both beige. Oh, the house they look two different, total different yeah, colors. This, this, one is, you know, <laughs> this one is, you know, 10 years old, so it's kind of like dirty, I need to wash it. Does your garage have electric and water? No, no, just the shell and the cars inside. What kind of um, structure, sub, uh, uh, what kind uh, of flooring uh, or is it cement? And, okay, I'm going to have you go back to the microphone just so that um, we get your answers for the minutes. Um, so it's a permanent s surface there in the garage. Your parking motor vehicle is there. I mean, it, it is clear from an aerial that we got off of parcel access, which I don't think this has a date on. 
when the photography was taken. There's only one garage here, and it's clear that there are multiple cars parked back there. Oh, well, I'm donating three of them. In fact, I already made an arrangement with a fire department. They're taking three of them out. Uh, I just didn't have time, but I do have the title here. I spoke to, uh, to the Secretary of the Fire Department this morning. I okay. made an arrangement. They're picking up three, three cars this week. I'm okay. donating it to them, so that's considered done. Because I was going to say, if you've now got a second garage and you're still parking cars outside, oh, no, 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 then... Oh, well, those are just um, commuter cars that I put a lot of mileage in it. Okay. Just pretty much, you know, I have no use for it. Like, I already spoke to Ron and the secretary. They're taking those three vehicles okay. this week. They'll use them for training. Yeah, I have the title, the keys. So that's going to be gone. I don't know. What do you, do you talk to your neighbors at all? What do your neighbors oh, say about these? They never say anything. In fact, they Go admired ahead. it, you know. What, what it, why is this here before us? Why is it? Floodplain violations. Okay, so it was built in a floodplain. The complained about his yard flooding. The neighbor complained, okay. Looking so we, into it and saw the fell and realized so it was, Okay, no so permits. let's. Thank you. So you actually had to bring in fill to be able just to, to level it, off enough of an area to be able to put this garage in? No, just to make it the same level as the other garage. It wasn't that much, just to make it the same. How uh, much is not much, though? Uh, and and where, what was trucks. the source of it? Where did it come from? Uh, from um, that, that, that um, cement place down in Route 52. I have all the receipts back then. Uh, they came in and you know just made it level so this way they look uniform and when was it trucked when was the material trucked in uh about six months ago maybe so it wasn't all in the course of one year oh yeah yes yes well no there's a limit on how much can be trucked in uh, no, how they, much they, fill they you did can it in put a, into a day a and a half uh, a day and a half it was or just to make it the same level as the other garage okay so you You've got a floodplain that you've now built in, so that's one violation here, and that's one mm -hmm. issue we got to deal with. There's a stream here and a dra drainage easement and a what's in the back there? Grayhead Creek. So I mean, you've got multiple areas. It's, it's a wet area, so maybe it's maybe your lot is not. I mean, I've never seen any water back there. Uh, even when we had that storm a couple of years ago, I never have any problem. I mean, it's... Uh, Rick, it is a floodplain violation because it's within um, uh, 100 feet, or is it... Or it's totally in the floodplain, and it's in the wetland buffer. Totally in the floodplain and totally in the wetland buffer. Because he's got a creek back there. Okay. So you got to be a hundred feet from the creek, from the yeah, from the edge from the of border edge. of the wetland. So Correct. whatever that's going to be, which it appears that that might be the creek. But if he's it, well, the drainage easement by itself is not going to be a wetland. Drainage easement by itself. Yeah. Because um. I the way, where the way the drainage easement is here, it doesn't. So it looks like there's an area in the middle that's not. Wetlands. This is what Michelle, our planner, right. printed out yep. for me. Yes, that, that's what it appears to be. But well, it, it's all totally surrounded by wetland. Mm -hmm. Sure. Yeah. The first garage is set back enough, but not the second. Well, yeah, the first one is 137 feet, 37 and a half feet back. So the, the first one. From, well, actually, you know what? That's from the property line. We don't actually have it from the wetland. Okay. Uh, when was your survey done? Um, just you, recently. Just, just November of last year. Okay, we're yes. going to need your surveyor to go back. He's going to have to give us the wetland boundary. Okay, um, which means... Oh, that don't say, I have or a the bigger. floodplain. He needs to show us not just your property line, okay. but he needs to show us the distance to the creek. I don't know if this would show. I have a bigger version. And when was the last time this wetlands was flagged? Oh, may I? Yeah. yeah. Maybe this will... I 
chart supports you, and then I'll figure everything will be here. Yeah, this is what we have. We yeah, that's exactly what we, we have. We have a it's smaller version. version of it. Yeah, yeah, no, no. Okay. We need uh, him to identify or wetland, somebody to identify wetland you can back. and the uh, floodplain, okay. and he has access to that information. But again, we need to see it on the plan, uh, on this map of yours, because that's where the violation is occurring. O okay, on oh, floodplain. Two issues: wetland, floodplain. Yeah, I, we just don't have enough information here to, because we need to understand how much of this structure is in. Mm -hmm. And whether the, the metal carport's gonna be a problem too, you know what I mean, that's. The edge of the carport is 51.2 feet away. So from your setbacks, you've got, it's okay. But again, because you've got the drainage easement there, whether you're gonna have more of an issue, we don't know. So you got to, you have to give us some more information. Okay. I didn't know this is my first time. No, that's, that's okay. I'm actually thinking, can we have Michelle connect with him? Or we'll have the town planner okay. give you a call so that we can get so you he already has a floodplain development permit pending okay so somewhere somebody has the information about where the floodplain is yeah our manager does. are both structures in the floodplain or just the one the the carport the first one predated our management of the floodplain okay it was suggested but we weren't so the very, carport is in the viol is in violation too them which we do now. Okay, so to reflect what Rick just said, the first garage was built before we were managing floodplains. Okay. Um, so the, it appears the first garage is also in the floodplain. So your, your metal carport's gonna be in the floodplain as well as the second garage. Okay. You got much bigger issues here. Hmm. But I, I need to understand how much of it is. The whole building or the? Okay. The, both the original garage too? Floodplain goes all the way up to the house that's there. Oh, that's not. It's a large floodplain on, on both sides of the road. Yeah, that's not on here at all. Right. Yeah, yeah, I think we need that information because whether we get it from. It varies when FEMA changes the boundaries of it. We use parcel access and whatever other tools Rick has to do that. Right. He's the floodplain manager, and he determines if it's in or out, and then what permits are required. Okay. And then it can it can escalate to a, a, a wetland disturbance permit, which DEC would have to sign off on. You, we, yeah, we may need. To refer them I know to that's. Yeah. That's why it wasn't a simple thing for you to just put this in here because it's there's a lot. Okay, so we're need, we're going to need to understand how much fill. I'm going to want a statement in writing from you on to how much fill came in. Okay. Okay. Uh, you know how many trucks, the size of the truck, et cetera, um, and then. I did a rough guess. It's like 250 yards just for the footprint of the building. Okay, but that was based on what what depth? About four feet. Okay. Yeah. But again, the thing is, if it was just purchased in the last six months, they would have a record, each truck and how much cubic right. yard the truck was hauling in. You're going to have to look at the historical topography there to see what's changed. Right. Correct. Because. All right. So our town planner okay. will have her call you. Okay. To let you know how much additional information we're going to need. Because, like I said, this may be need more than just this board's approval. Okay. That's what we have to say. Okay. Okay. Um, I think it really would be helpful for us to understand. One of those garages only had one door to them. The newer one, right? Yes. Only had one just, door. Yeah. The other one had the two. So for yeah. a 53 foot wide building, I think we're going to need to understand. When we've asked for this from other applicants before, what's how is the inside of these structures being used? Why do we really need such large structures there? Because oh. again, you offer there's a there's a garage in the house, and then you're asking for two. Well, I got about 12 muscle car inside, and this big truck will be going to the other garage, and my race car. You know, it's just it's just a hobby, but. Uh, 
Okay. All right. So we'll have the town planner give you a call, and we're going to need to see you again with some okay. more information. Do you have my cell phone, or you uh, it's in your application, right? Okay. You, you yeah. So be. we'll have her call the information on your you your cell phone's on here. Okay. 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 Or I can stop by tomorrow too if you want me to. But, uh, Is she here tomorrow? Okay. So yeah, maybe let let her call you first. Okay. No okay. Problem. Okay. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Good night. So we'll see you in February with information. Well, let's let's make sure Michelle okay. may she'll direct him with what she need what she what she'll need for okay. us, and then whether he can get it in time to be back in February. Okay. Thank Perfect. Thank you. Sorry, that was a lot more. That's why you don't build garages without <laughs> checking first. Item number 13, Appeal 3897, Laurie Amoridi. Uh, Daniel Laurie and Lisa Amoridi, 30, sorry, 35 Gary Williams Road Homes are requesting a two foot variance for an existing eight foot chain link fence in their rear yard pursuant to section 194-56B of the zoning ordinance. Okay, so this is the first time we're seeing this. There, there is a note here that the fence is to keep the bobcat and coyotes out of your yard. Yep, so take already... us through your application. Go ahead. So we live in a cul-de-sac and it's not visible from the front. It's behind the house. I have a few fruit trees and a couple of animals. So two dogs and we've already lost two cats to coyotes. Okay. Uh, we have one cat left and I have a picture here. I, I made it black if I can approach. Okay. And so we contracted with a company called Defense. They put it in, and I think Rick was um, looking at something else and noticed the fence didn't have the right permit or any permit, and so we want to fix that. Can we have this picture for our file? Absolutely. Okay, thank you. All right, tell me what's around your property. Uh, let's see. It's a private road, so we're set back a couple hundred feet. The house faces the private road, and behind the house is the fence with, in the fence is our little vegetable garden and a couple fruit trees. And the dogs run around back there. Behind that is another, oh, I don't know, 16 acres or so that we own. And behind that is the EQ. And behind that is what? DEQ, uh, so some of the wetlands. Um, there's a, a pond back there. I don't know the name of it. So maybe a quarter mile away. I, I have to tell you, I went to try to do some research on how high bobcats jump because we know deer can jump right. six foot fences, but I couldn't find anything about. Yeah. Bobcats. So basically, and coyotes I, and how much they, how high they jump. Yeah, we we came out from Oregon and coyotes are the big problem. They'll actually climb up to 15 feet, but if it's high enough, they would rather not do that. It also gives our dogs time to run into the dog door, and then if it's black, the visual is is such that they try not to go through it, especially with the deer. If it's green, somehow they can recognize distances better, but black kind of confuses them. Okay. So the immediate surrounding to this, I mean, who's going to see this fence is really the only time this board has approved a eight foot chain look fence is was on a 99 acre property where nobody was going to see that fence. Okay. Okay, um, and so it's obviously a concern. I recognize you did, you know, your due diligence to minimize its visual impact, and it it is hard to notice it in that photograph, but yeah. taken from a certain angle. Right, so you can't, I actually, you might want to ask if he was out there. You, I don't think you could see it at all from the road. Okay. And that picture was from behind the house where the fence is behind the house. So in the front, there's, I think, a five-foot or a six-foot fence uh, gate on either side. That's all that you should see. Rick, you were out there, so. I don't think it'll be visible. 
the house to the right is off at an angle, and then the house to the left is off to an angle. And there's a lot of woods and rock, a lot of rock. That's just, there's a lot, of, it's, I mean, it's a forested area, essentially. The dilemma that we have is that we've had other requests for AFA fences, not necessarily in forested areas or, or you know, heavily vegetated areas. Um, and chain link fences are just not allowed at all. So we run into two really significant issues here that this board needs to be sensitive to setting a precedent about. Mm -hmm. So if it helps, I can bring you pictures of the bobcat and the coyotes because I have those trail cams. Uh, they're out there. Um, again, what I would suggest is maybe you can come back in April, as you heard earlier, the town is going to have a workshop on fences and sheds. Uh, next month, and then they may make a decision by March or so, and then by April we may have a better chance. Hold on, when did you put the fence up? Uh, I think about two years, a year and a half, two years ago. Yeah. Oh, okay, all yeah. right, so it was before December 31st of 2017. Yes. Okay. I, I think it's probably really close. <laughs> okay. Do you have a receipt? Yeah, for... I do, uh, somewhere. Okay. Yeah, that, that would something. make a difference. So that, what's the date so, that we're so looking basically, for? basically, well, again, What's what date? That's the changeover that something happens? There's nothing decided oh. yet. What we're hearing is that they are considering, based on the applicant, oh, I think you might have stepped in after he came, was here. One of the previous applicants has an eight for fence and has been talking with the town board about right. creating an amnesty program for fences that were up before December 31st, 2017. And so um, the town board has to consider it and then hold a public hearing and adopt it if that's what they wish to pursue. We don't know if eight foot fences will be in there or not, chain look fences, we don't, we really know nothing about the parameters of what they will consider. So but, what are you recommending for me at this point? You know, what can I do to expedite this? You need more pictures, you need, I mean, what do you need? I don't know. I mean, I would suggest, as I said, uh, to um, um, adjourn this uh, discussion till April, April, because once we get a feedback from the town, because they're, ha they're having a workshop next month, and you, you can let your representative or the town supervisor know your concern, and so he is going to make it part of the discussion in the workshop. And then the, in March they might, I mean, I don't know the time frame, but then they'll have a public hearing and then you can go into the public hearing and you can say, I have this concern, can I be grandfathered in because I have this, uh, the, this evidence saying that I do meet the, the cutoff date, my fence was done before the cutoff date, et cetera. And so this way by April, we'll have, be in a better position to, uh, uh, um, to know what the to town board's gonna allow. Allow, yeah, because it's an amnesty, uh, one-time amnesty. It's not a change in the, uh, our law, it's just a one-time amnesty just to overcome some of these. Uh, and it might give this board more cover for, you know what I mean, for considering offense that's not really allowed by code. So in April, so, I should be before you again. Well, I think what we'll do is adjourn your appeal until the April meeting to give the town board time to consider whatever it is that they're going to do. And then we'll know whether you would be factored into or allowed to what you have based on the parameters of whatever the town board is gonna consider. All right. Okay? All right. Does that um, work for you? Yeah, I mean, that's if that's what we need to do, sure. Yeah, because right, otherwise, right now, I'm, you know, like I said, without being an extremely large property where it's not gonna be visible really yeah, by anybody. It's about 22 acres, I think, that we own. That, that, that actually does help to have that Yeah, as plus part the DQ is another couple hundred which are behind us. Okay. So. Um, sound like a plan? Okay. <laughs> so do I have a motion to adjourn this application until the April meeting? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. We will see you in April.
All right, item number 14, Appeal 3898, O'Donnell Residential Construction. John O'Donnell, O'Donnell Residential Construction, Inc. is requesting a seven-foot frontline variance for a proposed dwelling, which is to be built on the existing foundation of a dwelling which was built in 1962 at 374 Augusta Drive, Walpole Junction, and destroyed by a fire in February 2017, pursuant to Section 194-126 of the Zoning Ordinance. Good evening. Hello, how are you? Good, how are you? Good. So, there was the property was originally built 1962 yep. when zoning was didn't exist. Um, it was destroyed by fire, and at this point you're running out of time to rebuild it. But yeah. <laughs> what you're looking to do is work with the existing foundation. Yes. Yeah. And so it's in the character of the neighborhood. Um, there's a shed in the back. Do we? Yes. Is that staying? Is that going? Is that? Um, I was going to leave it for the next customer you know whoever purchased the house but it appears it's 13.3 feet away as opposed to the 15 feet that's oh, okay. required yeah so can you move it in yeah i can move it it's not sitting on a foundation well, or anything move it, it in just, two feet okay yeah, yeah no problem it's eight by eight too because right now you're not making the argument why you need to keep it okay that's all so, right i know so if you have the ability to move it in yeah it's just sitting on the ground actually let's do that because it doesn't give us a size but i'm gonna guess it's fairly small yeah, it's eight by eight, actually. Okay. Um, and so you're running out of time in terms of getting that building permit at this yeah, point. Yeah, it's February 18th, I think. Okay. We don't see it on here, but if anybody's gone on Augusta Drive, it clearly is in character with the other Absolutely. houses on the street. So do I have a motion to set this for public hearing? So and Sorry, go ahead. You also need the seven-foot sideline variant. He needs a seven. The existing foundation is 18.6 feet away. Okay, so we need to amend the write up to reflect a seven foot, because you're 18.6. 18, 18 on the right, yeah. Yep, okay, so a eight, seven foot front line and seven foot side line. And the notice doesn't have to reference uh, section 194, 126, because that section's about um, any building non conforming in use, and this is okay. non conforming in bulk. All oh, right. So it's so it's a separate situation, which isn't addressed by the code. Okay. okay. It, beyond just a normal variance. Okay. How about the front steps? If I was to do two or three steps, would that be Concrete considered part of it? If I did it in a paver or some kind of a, if it wasn't a permanent, because the front is also 43, I think. If he's putting steps up. If there's no footing for it. Steps, I mean, if you're to it, putting a wood deck, a wood steps, that's going to need a variance as well. Yeah, but if I use like a patio paver type step, that's so it's not, it's removable. Yeah, concrete is okay. That's. Okay. So like the concrete Because the elevation okay. of that new house is a little different the way it's set up. Um, the original house, it was step right, one step down. This front door is probably two and a half feet higher than. Okay. So there would be probably three steps required. And so you're, but again, as long as it's some okay. concrete yeah. and not wood. Right, right. Okay. Okay. Then it doesn't, otherwise, the angle back, what do you think is the dimension of what you're going to need? So it's almost where that pad is now that shows on the front. There's still an existing pad there, concrete. So you're going to work with the existing pad? Yeah, I think I can. Okay. It lands centered on the house, so it should be. A okay. So if you work with the existing. Okay. But I, I have to add three steps to get to the front door versus where, where this pad is now, the old existing house was one step into the door understood the important okay. thing here is what is the material of the steps right concrete okay we're good on that okay just make it, I, it i thought i was it was okay. as long as it's concrete sure it's I good know. but yeah. if it's wood you run into an issue no doubt. so because of the footing correct yeah i mean does it make sense to just consider a variance for the existing steps just in case 
uh, we're here. Why not? Right. Why not? Um, I just don't have a dimension for it. Right. Can somebody, a surveyor or somebody, yeah, get back could, out there and? I could. Um, I mean, they should be able to measure off whatever that concrete area, right. and then just call Pam with yeah, whatever that the, is. Okay. Because then Pam, you'll have it reflect the seven-foot frontline variance for the dwelling, and then it's probably an additional. It looks like it might be more than five feet. That's the only, you know, the normal. ADA accessibility would be five feet. It looks like the smaller one might be five feet, so that might be a little bit bigger. Yeah, the right one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so just let Pam know what that yep. is. Yes, okay. All right, are we okay with the, just let's put it on the record, it's there already, and as long as he stays within that footprint, we're okay? Mm -hmm. All right, do I have a motion for public hearing? So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Okay. Aye. We will see you. Pam will give you your instructions okay. to your sign. We'll see you next month. And last but not least, item number 15, Appeal 3899, Mortensen, Tanya Mortensen, 11 Americana Boulevard, Hopewell Junction, is requesting a 15-foot frontline variance for a proposed 24-foot by 24-foot detached garage pursuant to Section 194-107C of the Zoning Ordinance. Right. Hi. So Hi, this how is are you? Good. This is the first time we're seeing this. I'm just, you have a corner lot. So let's see your actual application, Americana. Does your house have a garage now? Yes. So you're looking to add a detached garage because? Because I have too many things to park that I don't have enough room for in the two car garage. And so you've got a corner lot. So your actual access, your driveway is on Taconic Drive. Correct. But I guess the front of your house is on Americana. Americana. Why can't it go on the other side or be next to the existing garage? That's, that's where I'm trying to put it, next to the existing garage, using the same driveway. I'm seeing it, the proposed garage going in front of the pool. Correct. That's where my existing garage is. And that's Guess what I'm saying is why can't it be immediately adjacent to the other garage right next to it? Uh, it can't be the driveways there. Um. Come on up. Maybe I'm not making myself clear. Why can't it be right here? You've got a whole brick area that's all. This is where it's, that's where I'm. What's this? Uh, I mean, this is, this is the front of my house. I don't know why it looks like it's there. In my eyes, it's right, here. it's right here next to the pool, right here. That's not what we're this being one. shown. What is this? Detached garage, 24 by. Yeah, it's it's kind of just be a little closer right here. Right here near the it's garage. Not so it far is supposed back. to be here. I'm not sure. I mean, Brian uh, drew it on there. Brian. From okay, so basically you have a garage right now. Mm -hmm. Garage, right two-car garage one, here. And so you've got one garage here and another garage here. Right here, yep. Well, this is proposed. This is the proposed one right okay. here. It's going to be this close. But uh, I don't see... On this, I don't on this see drawing, anything. It's, it's where she's talking about. If you look in the other drawing. Much right, you're talking about oh, right I here. see, okay. Yeah, but this is not to scale, so... Yeah, it's much more. Well, it's much this smaller. Is, this is where I, I How big is your pool? Let it let, let it guess. Uh, let's work from that. How big is the pool? 32. All right. So if this is 32 and 16, that's not 24 by 26. Because I, I this is the size of the garage, 24 by 24. This is the one I hand drew and I brought it here and they told me I had to go to an architect and where I have it here is where he was drawing the 24 by 24. I don't know why it came out like that. Because that's to scale. But that's not where I, it's supposed to be, right over here. How far away is it going to be from the pool fence? Eight feet, 10 feet. It looks like more than that. Yeah. This is 12 feet. It's probably 12 but it's, or 15 sure, feet away. But look up here. It says 14 feet up here. So it's 14, up, 14 and a half. Right. Is that's what I'm saying. That's probably 15, 15 feet, feet here. Yeah. Well, it's, it can be closer. That's 
I, don't, I asked her to be closer. If you could see where I hand drew, and I brought my papers to him. Yeah, but it's not, it's not going to necessarily fit there, because that's not, that's not going to be eight feet away. Well, because I didn't know how to draw it that way, so I <laughs> took it over to this guy. But, okay. Um, but I took it over to Brian, and where I have a driveway that goes in straight, and I have a one that comes over here. This right here in between the pool and the garage is a screened in porch. It says garage and screened in mm -hmm. porch. So I was gonna leave visibility from the porch, um, the door and half of the screen, and then the garage right here. So I'm not sure why on the plan it looks like that, but it should look like that. So what I would well. suggest is that uh, go back to your architect and I have him redo it properly so that we can make a decision because right now it's we have no well I, I still didn't get the answer to why not on this side that's my front lawn okay and it will be in front, yeah, of, the in front of the house there. people have garages in the front of their house I, I don't I don't know what the front of your house looks yeah, like yeah. so you this know is, with the appropriate architectural features to it it could look like it belongs there I don't know so well, the garage looks this is very like it belongs to the house, here. but you, it would be in front Okay, but do you that. see this dotted line? This dotted line is your buildable area without needing any variances. So you have area on your lot that you could build in without needing a variance. That's why I, we have to ask the question. Okay. All right? This, this is you even have an area over here you could put it. No, I couldn't. It's a rock ledge in the back of my house. That, that's, you, again, yeah. you know your house better, your that, lot that's better that's than saying. we would. Sometimes the topography right. drops off right. or there's other issues that we either. can't. And it's a hill. We, we, and it doesn't show, show us that here. Yeah. So that's why I'm just saying it's, that's why I have to ask the questions. Because it looks like there's a little stone wall here. It's so a sidewalk. Sidewalk, okay, mm -hmm. the little patio. That's yeah, there's two front doors and there's a sidewalk here. So to put a garage in front of there, would it's a Dutch colonial. So there's no windows in the front of the house there. Um, this obviously is the garage, but I mean, it looks the best here. And it's the... Are you going to attach the new proposed garage um, to the existing, existing garage? Now. You're gonna have like... All right, at this point, why don't we have you guys step back sure. to the microphone over there. Um, is that an option? Could you attach it to... No, because it's too far distant well, from that screened-in garage. Well, the face of the garage and then it wouldn't, you'd be driving through one garage to get into the other one. Um, okay, so one of the things you need to confirm with your architect is right now he is showing this as 14 and a half feet from the property line, but it also looks like it's 15 feet away from the fence. If you can reduce that by half, the 15 feet, make it the 8 feet that you're thinking it's going to be, then that gives us seven or eight more feet to make the 14 and a half, 21 and a half, uh, 14 feet away from the, from, especially on a curve is. I don't think it is that close to the road. I mean, we measured it. I took all the stuff to Brian. You I'm can't go by the road. You have to go by your property line. Okay. You had, it appears to me that there's still another couple feet distance between your property line and the road okay. so you can't go by the road you got to go by the property line okay are there any other issues that we should look into before well can you tell me where's your, where's your well where's your septic because the that... well is on the other side of the house in the front yard and the septic is on the other side in the front yard the wells by the, on the opposite side of the pool in the backyard Oh, it's in the back, yeah. Yeah. And the septic is in the front on the right. Because neither one of those is actually showing up on here, so. Yeah, if, if your architect can show that, that'll help us. Okay. Um, but again, so from, from our understanding, you enter your, you drive into your house from Taconic Drive, but your house faces Americana Boulevard, and that's why you can't have anything facing Americana. What's the garage going to look like? Um, we I submitted pictures. pictures of it. Um, <clears throat> so it is a nice residential garage it would be in right a residential area. Match up nice on where we're proposing it. No, 
it's a nice looking garage. That's uh, I don't have go any right here. So you drive into those garage doors like this. You would come in this way into this garage, mm -hmm. and it, it will sit nicely there. I just don't know why he didn't make it correctly. Okay, is the there side. any screening? Is there any vegetation along here? I have a lot of vegetation along here. Not quite as down as far as the garage would come, but I'll plant it. I have no problems with that. Because again, that's a it's white is because that's the color you're going to think you're using. I, I understand it matches your house, but it's white. And if it's only 15 feet away or 20 feet away from the street, that's going to be a significant. I don't mind putting up any kind of screening or whatever. I think that would really I'm help. I'm actually going to redo what I have here is kind of like uh, straggly bushes. And I'm going to take them all out and do pine trees. I can do it all the way down in front of the garage. Did you I try to bring the garage as close to the existing. Are there paper? any limitations on how close it can be? I've, again, we need you to mic use the microphone over there, folks. We, we are there any limitations on? On the closeness, the proximity of the of where the pool is and all that. Where are you? Where's your you? Where's your equipment for the pool? If there's any underground lines or oh, anything no. like that? No, that's. Where's like, the electric feeding it's, from? That's, no, that's no, that's all right. inside the. The backyard and the fence. Okay, area. so I was just so I can bring it. We could bring it as close to the fence yeah, as we we the, want. Yeah, the closer right. you bring it to the pool, the less variation uh, variance you're going to be requesting, and so that'll be a little bit easier okay. on us. Yes. Okay. Right. All right. Well, it's all, have right. you had any discussion at all with your neighbors? My neighbors. I don't think will any of my neighbors will have a problem. Okay, especially if you screen it. I think yeah, that I don't even really... think they would have a problem if I didn't. We don't have that kind of relationship as neighbors, and I don't think it's going to be an eyesore or going to look that much different than what they see now. Yeah, no, I, I, what you're proposing is yeah. a, a nice structure, but you never know. Right. Okay. So. Would we need any okay? Yeah, would it help if we got any of that? Or? On the, the hand drawn map that you did, it says 35.2 feet. Is that what you've measured? <laughs> Well, that is what I measured, but when I came and saw Pam, she did tell me I measured wrong. Okay. Because I measured from the up to the road, to and the I have, to go, have yeah. to go in back a, a certain bit. amount of feet from the road. Wasn't I didn't come in far enough. But that's still a 20 foot difference from what the architect has. I know. I don't know what went wrong there. Yeah, but the but size of theirs is what she's small. proposing is so different. So, it that's not a 24 by 24 foot box if this is 32 feet this way right there's just no way so I was just trying to draw it on for where it was going to I get it <laughs> the size of it nope I okay. get it that's that's why you rely on professionals to, to be able to and, and I did <laughs> well and even I don't know if you were here when one of the, you know one of the earlier applications came in he knew what he wanted but because it was before we were requiring surveys he went from the edge of the pavement and set it from the edge of his property line, and it, so he ended up being closer than he thought. So that's why most people don't realize that they don't own necessarily the property all the way to the edge of the pavement. Right. Okay. So that's what we have to be careful of, because at some point the road may need to get widened, may need drainage put in, who knows? Sidewalks, who knows? So that's why we gotta be careful that you're staying as far away from the edge of your property line as we can get you. Yeah, and I can do that. I'll have him move it as close to the pool and the porch there that we can. And so after I do that and bring in those papers, what's the next step? Uh, we, I think we need to see this one again because we don't even know what their variance is at this point, okay? okay. Um, <clears throat> When you say that there's, it's a rock ledge over in the back there, mm -hmm. does it the topography change over there as well, or is it just rock? <clears throat> it's gradual. There's rock towards the back where you said, could I put it back there? I have plenty of room. Uh, there's a, a rock ledge up higher, um, and then it just gradually comes down to where the driveway okay, is. Okay, so it's going to be more of an issue of putting a foundation in. I don't and think it's going it to be. Or, well, and, if we no, went in the backyard, it, it would be, be, but yeah, not where it would it's be going. Totally, in the front, it's not going to be. It's flat where level, the driveway is. Level, flat, and the driveway. It would. There's already like a paved spot where we're going to put it for a large part of it. We might, we're going to have to take that out and put the foundation in, but. Um, <clears throat> Again, that's not flat. showing either, so. 
The you little got bit it. Of driveway is showing where it turns in. No, no, no. I know, oh. but you're saying you're taking away a paved area. So. Well, I mean, when, when you put the foundation some, in, it's yeah. just a little bit of blacktop. That's okay. what I'm talking it's about. Like two parking spots there. That we would. <clears throat> it appears to me that the box was drawn in at the end of the gravel drive, as opposed to. Right. Maybe you're thinking it's going to be a little bit closer over some of that gravel drive. Yes. Okay. Well, you got to be careful of as you're, if you use that garage as you're backing out, you don't want to hit the new garage, obviously, if you're... Nowhere near it. Yeah. yeah. It's, okay. it's just, it would, it would be like an L, one to the other, but it's, it would be clear shot. The way where we're proposed putting it, there's actually There's the screened in porch there. and then the pool area as well, so... And there's two parking spots there that are away from the driveway. That's where we're... That's where the okay. garage we're, is going to go. Where we would right. like to put it. Um, makes the most sense. I mean, when are you looking to build this? Uh, three three months ago. <laughs> oh, well, um, at this so, point, you're not putting a foundation in the ground <laughs> in the next month or two. So, so, so we're going to have you come back next month, have Brian make the updates to this, so that it's more reflective of what where you think it's going to go. Okay. All right, and then we'll get a much better sense of the measurement of what you, the variance really is that you need. Because I don't want to send something to your neighbors that says it's only 14 or 15 feet away, or 14 feet, actually, and then it becomes 20 feet away. Okay. That's, that might right. excite your neighbors on, you know, unnecessarily. Okay. So I don't want to raise any concern with them if we can minimize it. Okay? Okay. Thank so you. We'll see you next month. We'll next see you month. next month. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Motion to adjourn. Is there a second? A second. <laughs> All in favor. <laughs> Maybe we're having too much fun. I don't know. What is this motion for?